I like telescopes. I like telescopes. I like telescopes, especially when they're small. I like OMCs. I like SCTs. I like MCTs, especially when they're black. Oh, hi. Sorry. Um, my name is Roland, and this is... Um, a comparison between two telescopes. This is a 5.5 inch, and this is a, oh, I just missed it, that's a five inch. This is what I'm looking at, next door neighbor's house, their roof. I'll come back to that. Anyway, this is um, a 5.5 Maksutov, made by Orion Optics in the UK. And yes, I have two diagonals because it is not easy to achieve close focus on this telescope. It has such a long focal range. On this telescope, I have a star diagonal at the moment. And I did do a clip showing these two little statues, or one of them. But today I'm focusing on the roof uh, with both telescopes. And I will try and give you an image of what I can see on that roof. Um, so this is the red dot finder I have on my uh, C5. The red dot finder just uh, fires a laser and allows me to align it. I think you can see a, there's a glimpse of the uh, corrector. And the corrector on the... This is, this is my metal dew shield I have on the um, Maxutov on the OMC140, so it does look quite a bit bigger but it is only a half an inch uh, longer in diameter. The, um, the mount and tripod, that's a German equatorial mount, Great Polaris, made by Vixen in Japan, equatorial mount. It's stamped Orion Optics, uh, because there must have been some little partnership there. But this is 100% Orion Optics' this tube. Um, not to be confused with Orion in the US. This is a OMC Orion Mac Sutov Cassegrain 140, 5.5 inch telescope. And this is a 5 inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. They are similar, catadioptric telescopes um, very very similar in size this one's quite a bit heavier because of course I have it mounted on a German equatorial mount and um, well you can see even the finder scope here is a lot heavier the mounting for the finder scope and uh, it's a 9 by 50 finder scope I've got here might be 10 by 50 I'm not sure but it's got crosshairs there are crosshairs there so um, that's useful. Here we go. You can see the crosshairs. I'm focused on the edge of next door neighbor's roof. There's a small crack in one of the tiles. I'm sure their roof is not going to fall down, but it was just something I could uh, focus, uh, something I could, a subject, let's say. There's a crack on the roof tile. It's very hard to uh, center this exit pupil onto the um, little camera on the back of the tablet that I was filming this with. Uh, here, mm, could be because I have a larger apparent field of view, maybe. Uh, but I've managed to do a better job, I think. Especially once I get it steady. There's the crack. And here it's snapped into focus. Isn't that great? You could see ants walking about on that roof. Little ants little bees, little flies and things, insects on next door neighbor's roof. Fascinating. Uh, so yes, this is a Teleview eyepiece. And this is a Teleview eyepiece 24 panoptic instead of a 14 radian. And I have two diagonals because I need to achieve close focus, which is difficult with this telescope. Teleview Everbright Dielectric Diagonal. Very good diagonal. Whichever, di uh, whichever telescope I put this diagonal on, um, I, I had the better 
gave the better image. So it's a sort of whiter and brighter image and a superior contrast to this diagonal, which is just, this is a no-name Japanese diagonal that cost a quarter, a third, maybe a quarter, I can't remember. But it's a 90 degree diagonal. So um, whichever telescope I put the Everbright on, uh, that's a, that's a bet that was a better image that I got. Uh, sort of cooler whites, if you like, and rather than warmer whites, but also more contrast, more light, 90% throughput of light compared to this diagonal, which would be 80%. So you get 10% more light, basically, uh, which is, well, it's a difference. I mean, it's uh, anything that improves your uh, optics uh, has to be expensive. It is expensive. Unfortunately, all Teleview um, eyepieces are expensive, but I have not regretted ever, ever buying one. They are very good, and these are two of my best eyepieces, the 24 Panoptic and the 14 Radians. Okay, this is the microfocuser that I'm showing you now. This microfocuser is excellent, really. It was an upgrade to the original one. Um... I don't know if I mentioned, but this, this tube I actually bought second-hand. And that was that upgrade already been done. This focuser is not a micro-focuser. So you go in and out of focus with a small turn of the focus knob. Whereas with, the, uh, with a micro-focuser, you, you have to turn it a lot more to, um, to make a difference in focus. So... I'm not saying that uh, you can't achieve focus with this. Of course you can. But I do have a slight preference for the microfocuser. It is a finer movement. Both telescopes have very little uh, mirror shift, image shift, when you focus the mirror. But the C5 is especially steady. I was very impressed. And um, I like both telescopes. Here you can see the secondary mirror. It's quite a big obstruction. 37% and here the secondary mirror is just a layer if you like um, just a thin layer of uh, coating on the other side of the corrector which is much more curved in an e in a MCT than an SCT an SCT the corrector is basically correcting the optics of uh, the primary mirror whereas uh, this corrector on the Maxuka suit of is definitely um, curving the light a lot more and it has a focal length of 2000 millimeters this telescope so it magnifies a lot um, the field of view is smaller and that's one of the reasons why it doesn't close focus on, on close objects very easily and that's the reason why I've had to put two diagonals on so I can close focus on uh, the next door neighbor's house um, and the uh, the SCT has no pro problem close focusing. It is actually advertised as a terrestrial spotting scope, and I can, as I said, I can focus on the uh, statues at the end of the garden. Um, so both telescopes are not are non go to telescopes. I point them manually because uh, I do I do have a six SE with go to and computer which can be guided from software on your la on your tablet let's say or on a handset but uh, there's always uh something to be said for just manual control I'm a sort of um I'm a little bit retro I I, I like manual manual things in photography and um, and so forth and I do know my night sky a little bit I know the the constellations my name of a hundred stars I know where how to find M31 the Andromeda Ring Nebula um, Albireo etc double stars uh, because I've, I've simply been doing astronomy for a few decades so uh, yes you get to know things the stars do not change um, in the course of your lifetime, they're, they are there, and they are very much there. 50 years later, in the same place, more or less. And uh, so anyway, these two telescopes, 
very, very nice. I enjoy setting them up, especially the C5 that I can just grab, grab and go. Um, I hope my, uh, my commentary is not too haphazard and random. I'm sure it's not that exciting, but if you're considering a small telescope, maybe to start with, or as a second telescope, you already have an 8-inch and you're wondering, hmm, shall I get something of a different size? Maybe, yep. I really recommend 6-inch, 5-inch. This 5.5-inch is excellent. Very high, high um, magnifications obtainable. Uh, so basically, uh, a 24 millimeter eyepiece in this is the equivalent of using a. Uh, no, other way around. Uh, if I use a long, a lo basically a low power eyepiece in my Maxutov is uh, the same as a high powered eyepiece in maybe this telescope or my Newtonian, which is uh, um, only has a focal length of. 1,200 millimeters. Anyway, so I hope there was something useful there and uh, see you next time with another clip soon. Ciao.